I've been trying to find a stabilizer for this setup and I think I finally found it. How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring along with me to see if you can use a gimbal with the Tamron 35-150 and the Sony a7S III. So let's jump right into it. So I recently got my Zion Crane 2S, this bad boy, uh, to arrive because I read that it had a great capacity load when it came down to basically setting up a bigger rig, which obviously right there, and you know, that it could stabilize a lot bigger like body frames and everything like that. So I wanted to test it out to see if it could handle the Tamron 35 to 150. So my plan is to use this stabilizer to see how well it can stabilize from 35 and all the way to like more of the telephoto side of the 150 because obviously as you extend it out, it'll be a lot, you know, more different balance point that you just have to readjust, I'm, I'm guessing. So uh, I wanna see how much you have to really, I guess, alter everything and see if it can really take it and not be shaky or, you know, struggle with it. So we're gonna go out and get some footage to see how well it holds. So it's time to get some sunrise footage because it is uh, 6.39 and we're gonna go out right now because I wanna create something with it. I was able to, you know, open it up and get it ready the day before. And I think, it, you know, it's kinda nice to see what it comes with. Uh, you, you know, get to see the B-roll of it already probably at this stage in the video. If you haven't, well, It'll come up eventually, I guess. <laughs> but um, we're gonna go out, get some footage. I think it's the perfect way to use it. It's just, you know, going out and testing it together. So we'll see how it goes. Time to take some footage now that we're at the location and, you know, do a little bit of a sequence and see how well it works. There you go. That was the footage taken with the Zion Crane 2S with the Tamron 35 to 150. Now it is going to be quite of a heavier setup than what you would normally use with other types of lenses. That's why this type of gimbal has been quite phenomenal because it really holds the capacity of the Tamron from 35 all the way to the 150 without honestly being too much of a struggle. Like you just have to readjust a little bit the plate, like you'll either go forward or backwards just so that it counter balances a little bit better. But that's pretty much it when it comes down to that. Something that's very nice with this is just the, the connection from the camera to the gimbal where like I can use this right here to just set up my ISO, my aperture, even my shutter speed. Uh, um, if I'm doing like kind of like I guess uh, with letting the exposure be set by the camera I can do the exposure compensation too which is quite nice because then you don't really have to focus so much on moving anything on the camera and I can press record as well to start everything just flowing a lot faster and easier when it comes down to this gimbal but just my main honestly I guess love for this gimbal is that it just really holds the capability all the way to the 150 mark because I tried finding information online and I wasn't able to find anything concrete that it would work well with the gimbal. So I wanted to test it out myself and make this video for you guys in case you were wondering the same thing that I was wondering when it comes down to, you know, stabilizing a Tamron 35 to 150 on a gimbal. 
And I can honestly say it's, uh, you know, worked like a charm to be able to have this gimbal right now to, you know, have the 35 to 150 work so nicely when it comes down to stabilization. So, so far, so great. I'm, I'm excited to create more sequences and like short films with it so that I have the stabilized footage whenever I want it, want to, and then also have some handheld footage as well, just to add different types of variety of shots when it comes down to my footage. And I'll be honest, yes, it is a lot heavier than I would imagine it being with any other types of setup because of this lens. And obviously the gimbal itself is already kind of heavy. I used to have the Zion Crane V2, which wasn't as heavy as this one, but also it couldn't handle the payload of a lens like that. So there you go. I mean, that's just pretty much my input on that end. This has been a pretty cool setup. And honestly, when it comes down to having a stabilizer, when it comes down for a telephoto type of lens with 35 to 150, since it is more of a chunky boy, it's kind of nice to be able to just use the lens with a stabilizer to get more of stabilized footage than the in-body stabilization that the camera can do, since that lens obviously doesn't have it. So with that being said, this will kind of just be super cool to be able to do well, mainly for just all my you know, filmmaking needs and be able to have stabilized footage from the 35 all the way to the telephoto to the 150 since it does show a lot more shakiness once you get to more the telephoto side. So I think this will be a cool setup to have and hopefully this helped you out to know if it's the right setup for you. Currently the Zion Crane um, 2S, it was on sale on b &H for I think like 449 uh, from like 650 the combo kit. So if you're looking for a stabilizer, I think that would be a great setup. If I can find it as well, I'll leave it a link down below so you can check it out yourself and you know, get it for yourself if you're looking for a stabilizer that can handle a bigger payload. But with all that said and done guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, share this video with a friend. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.